Right, we're going to learn how to draw a parallelogram of forces using the component vectors in blue here to find the resultant vector by basically drawing funky shapes, parallelograms. Okay, so we get rid of all the nonsense. So we've got 400 newtons and 200 newtons acting on this body. All we're really worried about is the vectors. And the first thing we do is we draw them tail to tail. So here's both vectors drawn tail to tail. Now, what you would normally do is you would draw a scale diagram, okay? So this maybe a um, 100 newtons, this might be my scale, is one centimeter. So when I was drawing this, I would make sure that this vector here would be four centimeters long, and it would need to be going in the same direction because all vectors have size or magnitude and direction. This vector here, uh, 200 newtons, still drawn at the same angle. So we've drawn our two vectors tail to tail. The next step is to draw two parallel vectors to form a parallelogram. Parallelogram is made up of two parallel lines, but is not um, drawn like a rectangle, which is a right angle. So here, we've got two angles here, which are the same, and two acute angles here, which are the same. So we've got a parallelogram here. Then we draw a resultant vector by joining the tails here to the tops here. So we get a resultant vector here, which would be somewhere around 400 newtons. But you could measure using your scale and figure out the direction, which you could either do by getting that. Uh, you could either go for a sort of north, south, east, west thing in which case our yellow vector here would be going kind of southwest, okay? Or you could measure angles from the vertical, in which case that would be, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 degrees, or angle from the horizontal here, which would be, I don't know, maybe 40, 30 degrees, something like that. Okay, so we've drawn our parallelogram and the resultant force is acting here. And that kind of makes sense because we've got, if we look at all these vectors here, all the components, the blue ones, we've got quite a lot of left. And this vector here has a little bit of right. So we combine that, we get mostly left. There's no up or down from this blue vector here, but there is quite a lot of down from this blue vector here. So our resultant vector would be made up of quite a lot of down and even more left. So these two vectors combined would give us this yellow vector here, okay? Kind of in the same direction as that yellow one. So here we have an exam problem where a rock is pushed north with a force of 50 newtons and 35 degrees east, in an east direction of north, with 30 newtons. And we follow the same tips we had before. So I'm going to draw my first vector right bang in the middle of the page. But first, I'm going to decide my scale so I know how big to draw the vectors. Uh, you can draw this on a bit of page alongside, but this won't be to scale because it's on a screen. And I don't know how big your screen is. It might be on a phone. It might be on a monitor. So I'm going to go for one centimeter is equivalent to 10 newtons. There's my scale. So first up, I'm going to draw my 50 newtons north. So here is my 50 newtons, which will be to scale five centimeters tall, okay? Then I'm going for 35 degrees east of north, and I want it to be tail to tail. So my next vector needs to be east of north, so it'll be something like that, okay? That will be to scale 30 newtons, and east of north, 35 degrees. Next up, tip two, we need to draw two parallel lines to draw our parallelogram. Okay, so there's one, and then we have almost straight two. Now our resultant vector is drawn from the tails to the tips up here. So this will be tricky to draw in a straight line, but we'll see how we go. No, that's not going to be it. Let's try again. Okay, it's not very straight, but you get the idea. You join these two with a ruler and draw it as straight as you can. And this will be the size of our resultant vector. 
So the resultant vector is uh, joining the tails to the tips. It's a much straighter line. So it's, this is our resultant vector there. What you would need to make sure is you would need to measure the length of it. Now, I can't measure this on the screen, but it's going to be greater than 50 newtons. So let's just say you measure it and it's 6.2 centimetres. That would be 6 new, uh, 62 newtons. But vectors always have magnitude and direction. So here you could either go for the angle from the vertical or you could go from the angle from the horizontal here. Okay, it should be this angle. You would measure those using a protractor. Or you could go for the whole north, south, east, west thing. So this looks like this would be kind of north by northeast. Okay, because it's closer to north, but a little bit to the right. So you, as long as you get your size uh, of the vector and you get your direction, then you have answered the question. Right, our next problem, we have a rowing boat moving across a river at 50 degrees. So if this is my river bank, 50 degrees would be something like that, okay, to the river bank. And here we don't have forces, we have velocity or speed, all right? We've still got two directions, which is great. We've got two vectors. Uh, so once again, we're going to use a parallelogram of forces. And we're going to follow the same tips as before. So we draw the two vectors tail to tail. So the first one is 50 degrees. So something like oh, something like this. And we would need a scale whereby we can draw something that's 1.2 meters per second long. So maybe, I don't know, uh, two centimeters is equivalent of one meters per second. So therefore, 1.2 meters per second would be equivalent to 2.4 centimeters. Okay, so that vector would be 2.4 centimeters long, but to scale, you would have 1.2 meters per second. Now our next vector, since it's water, we'll draw it in blue. Okay, uh, we have south at two meters per second. So it would be, two meters per second would actually be a vector four centimeters long to scale. So it's going to be a bit longer this. So south, something like this. Okay. And that should be four centimeters long or two meters per second. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than this vector. Now, next up, we draw our parallel lines. So let's draw them here, so parallel to this vector, it should be going straight down something like this. It would need to be the same length, all right? And a vector here, parallel here, would be something like that, all right? And then we would need to draw the resultant vector tails to tops. Okay, so let's try and draw that, something like that. Okay, so there is my resultant vector of these two components. So to get this vector, uh, to get the marks for this, you would need to measure the length of this vector from here to here. Uh, you would also need to get the direction, which would be either sort of southeast, or you could use an angle from the, hor uh, from the horizontal, or an angle from the vertical, so you need the protractor to measure that, but as long as you get both the magnitude of the, of the vector using your scale here. So let's say, for example, this is uh, 3.4 centimeters. 3.4 centimeters would be equivalent to, oh, what would that be? That would be 1.7 meters per second. That would be your magnitude. And then you would need the direction which you could either get from north, south, east, west, or you could use an angle, either from the horizontal here or from the vertical here. 